Hi guys, Ryu here with another tool for Blender and in this one I'm gonna show you how would I go about actually editing this image. So that's the render we got from Cycles and that's where I would like to be. You can see that this is actually quite dim. If I grab this one and go to Camera Raw, see the histogram is actually quite low which means there's a lot of dark tones which is fine because it's a low-key image. Now what I would usually do, right, is go Ctrl J to um, I'll tell you what keys I'm using because there's no screencast keys add-on for this one. So Ctrl J to duplicate it, right? And then I would go to Camera Raw and increase um, the exposure. So go about here now and just pump the exposure just a little bit. I'm using TIFF, so um, I have a lot of leeway with working with tonality and exposure not as much as if i work on a raw file from the camera but it's still not bad so i can pump it up by you know 0 0.5 uh, stop it's okay so now we have difference in exposure which is fine i'm going to actually create a um, black mask which is uh, done by holding alt and clicking on mask layer as so we create a black mask now now to paint on black mask um you need to use a white brush so white reveals black conceals so to reset your colors you press d and to flip between them you press x so i'm going to grab this uh, grab the brush and maybe change flow to something like 20 or something and simply make this brush really big and dab a few times in the middle make it smaller and sort of brush along this face shape make it even smaller and then brighten up the middle maybe not so much the bottom i don't want the chin to be too bright okay i want just uh, this part to be brighter so see now if you switch it on and off we achieve kind of like a uh, like a spotlight effect in the middle here right by the way for photoshop i also suggest to use add-ons i'm using this is a new build new computer build so i don't have everything installed yet but i have a nick collection and topaz um, don't even have all my Topaz plugins yet, but um, some of these are really good. And Infinite Color, which is fantastic if you want to go lazy mode. And you don't want to really, you know, play too much with curves or uh, color lookups, and color balances and stuff. It's a good thing to learn it, but once you know how it works, you can just, you know, um, use plugins and then play with plugins and... As long as you know how to control it, but it's good to know the basic tools in Photoshop. So now we got this going. Now we need some contrast because it's a bit dull, right? So let's grab curves and we need some contrast here, right? So what we need is simply curves. Now wait a minute, let me close this window because I don't need it. Uh, let's grab curves and if you click on this handle, right? You're gonna have this eyedropper so now you can actually click and drag and whenever you click you see this these dots here there this histogram represents the tones in the image so i'm gonna click and drag it off to reset it so now if i'm going to hover my mouse over this area you see it changes this square is dancing up and down because i'm going from dark to bright so depending where you're hovering over you're selecting a specific area of tones so i want these to be brighter right and i want these to be slightly darker not too much that's a bit too much just a tiny bit like that maybe that's too much yeah something like this is good now i'm gonna change blend mode from normal to luminosity which will ensure that i'm affecting only bright and dark tones not the colors so saturation will be untouched now we have this nice contrast you see now what I want to do is actually remove it from uh, this um, bit here, this one. So I'm going to grab a pen tool. Maybe I can do it with a brush actually. Um, so switch brush to black. And let's just paint this off just a little bit. Normally I would do it with a with a pen, uh, pen tablet, but it's not plugged in yet haven't installed it yet so let's see before and after 
So it's not a big difference, right? But if I collapse the mask, so I'm going to hold shift and click on the mask. You see that? It's actually helping dim this part down. It's a slight detail, but trust me, at the end, it's going to be worth it. The same I'm going to do in here. I'm just going to dim this, uh, this place down. So mask. There you go. See? So now my attention goes here. I'm going to probably brighten this up a little bit more. So now I'm going to create a new layer. Now the curves. And I'm going to um, copy the mask. So hold Alt and move the mask on top and drop it. And I'm going to do the same thing. So switch to luminosity. I'm using second curves because it's simply easier to control it. You want to stack these effects. You don't want to... Uh, you know, go too crazy on on one. Otherwise, it's difficult to control it. It's too dark. Just a little bit darker. Now I'm going to invert the mask. So actually, you know what? Let's delete this mask. So let's uh, let's hold um, Alt and delete so it's gonna fill it with black which is a foreground color and now i'm going to now this does nothing right because the mask is on it so i'm going to switch to white and simply brighten this part in here so you see now my face gets even brighter because that's where i want you to look right so now i'm going to um i'm going to actually click shift alt e uh, shift alt control and e sorry go to a camera roll filter and we're going to add some clarity to this part so we're going to grab a brush and grab some clarity just a little bit don't overdo it and change the size of the uh man they they changed everything in this new photoshop everything is in different places it really annoys me it's like going to a supermarket you know you go to a supermarket and your favorite yogurt or something was moved to a shelf 100 meters away from where it's supposed to be and you end up looking for it for ages. The most important are eyes actually and this part, chin, I'm going to leave it alone. So just a little bit of clarity and this will slightly, you see, improve the contrast in here. It's going to draw even more attention. So let's see how far we've gone. Uh, if I'm going to hold Alt and click on this eye, I'll hold all the, all the other layers. See? It's pretty cool, no? Now, in my opinion, this right side, uh, the eye on the right side is a bit too bright. So, let's see. I think it's this one. No, it's the... Which layer is causing it? Wait a minute. Let me turn this off for a second. In fact, you know what? Um, let's see. It's this one, right? Okay, so let's actually... And grab a black mask and dim it down here. So the eye is not so not so bright, you see. Yeah, that's better. It was a bit too bright. So we're gonna repeat this step, okay? So we're going to Control Shift Alt and E. So now I don't need to repeat the steps, all I need to do is press Control Alt and F, and this will repeat. Um, the operation, the last operation of the filter. Since camera row is a filter, it will simply redo the same thing we've done in the previous uh, render. What the hell is this? Fascinating. Let's uh, let's remove it, shall we? So let's grab a rectangle, draw it in here, go to edit and content over fill. And we're done. Control D to remove it. Okay, now <clears throat> I got some serious bending in here, but again, I'm gonna fix it with the uh, with the add-on. So now let's do some toning, right? Now look, normally if I was doing it normally, I would just probably go lazy mode and go with light and through the infinite color. It's a paid add-on; it's not free, and cycle through it and get something like this, and then I would just adjust it, you know. So I'd probably find the um, probably colored lookup is causing the the contrast. Yeah, so I might want what I might want to do is sort of you know uh, conceal the mask, so Control I to invert it, and simply 
simply um, uh, simply reveal it in in the middle. So so I'll just click on this, go to brush and change to white, and sort of reveal it in the middle. You know, just the middle, so it's a bit brighter. See what I mean? So it's even more contrast on the face. So now uh, let's see what's causing the ah uh, this one right. So this one's a bit dark, but we can let's see what's happening here. Not the mask, the uh, selective color. Uh, we get some. Let's see the blues. Right. Okay. You know what? Actually, let's see that. We could actually lift the blacks a little bit. So. Maybe to minus one. So it's a little bit less dark. As I said again, if you really know what you're doing, um, you will, you know, if you know the plugins, you will understand how they work. I don't want this to be too dark because that's where my uh, text is gonna be. That's where my, I want you to circulate in this area, right? In this area. Okay, this area. Right, so if this one is too dark, you're gonna bounce back to this area, which is too bright, in my opinion. So, what we're gonna do is go to I think I'm gonna go and do it through Viveza. So, I'm gonna grab this uh, image, I'm going to duplicate it. Right, I'm gonna go to Viveza, which is a Nick collection software uh, stuff. Um, and uh, no thanks now. I'm going to click here and make this slightly smaller and reduce the brightness just a tad and co click OK. Now see, I, I reduced the brightness of this area here, which is exactly what I want because I don't want you to, to go back in this area. This one should be like a wall that you bounce back from. You're supposed to enter the image and circle in here like a piece of crop in a ice crack. You know what I mean? You're supposed to get in here and stay in this image, get locked in this area. So we're getting close, really. I mean, if you don't have any needed color, right, what you could do is simply go with curves, go to curves and go to blue. And you could pump in some blue in in here to get this bluish effect. And you could go to coral lookup and, and then change some presets in here and then work with them so for example this one and then reduce the fill and more or less you're gonna arrive in the same you know the same similar effect okay so just remember you have you have uh, layers to play with you know you could go with soft light and so on and you can do it manually yeah simply you know I know how it works, so f for me, even if I use plugins, I can adjust them manually because I know what they do. But again, it is really important for you to learn how to use things manually, how to adjust things manually before you move on to automated stuff. The same with hard ups and box cutter or machine add-ons in, in Blender. I mean, there are certain things Blender can't do, but the um, hard ups and other add-ons, you know what they do is simply um, m most of the the actions they perform they simplifying a lot of tasks that just take a lot of clicks in in blender but it's really good to know how to um, do it in vanilla so the same thing you know the same in here you need to know how to do it manually before you're gonna move on to to automated stuff which again you have to still adjust manually so now I'm gonna add some glow to these eyes because they're a bit, you know, a bit sad, yeah. So I'm gonna create a layer, and I'm going to sample this color from this one. And let's see. Now let's increase the flow to max, and let's simply tap one is here and the ones here. Switch to blend mode to linear dodge, or maybe even color dodge. Linear dodge is gonna be, I think, better. And just increase the fill just a little bit, and you're gonna get your bloom effect, right? And if you want more, you can create another layer. 
Let's say you create headlights, for example, like flares and stuff. You can dub again, not on the mask, uh, on the layer. Dub again, and then change it to soft light. And then increase the fill to something really small, so just like a tiny, gentle glow. Don't overdo it, because if you overdo it, it's going to look like shit. And, you know, it's all about, you know, easy does it, yeah, you see what I mean? It's just gentle, delicate, it's an accent, not the main feature, yeah. Now we need to fix this uh, banding, so again, shift, control, alt, and E. Now there are many ways of doing it, you could, um, you could actually blur it out and add some noise. You could uh, use plugins like Topaz, but actually, it, it really depends on the image too. I mean, this happens because of the tonal transitions on the in the areas where um, there's no detail. It's just like a plain area. We added a lot of adjustments, and that's why we got this nasty bending here, right? So sometimes changing modes helps. So I'm gonna switch it to then uh, go to image mode and shift it to 8-bit. So now it's gone, and I'm gonna switch it back to 16-bit, uh, so image mode and 16-bit. Now JPEG's gonna be always in 8-bit, so let's see if we're gonna get some bending in the JPEG. So let's see our image, let's look at it, um, let's click on Alt and click this back before and after. So we're looking really good. Now you see what happens is that all the attention now is here, right, in this area, you can see that clearly, right? There's the biggest area of contrast, we have this warm color on the eyes, anchor in here, this area is kind of bright and we have space for the text, which is perfect. So, now you could just simply add some text, you know, a name of the bot or some details and you know, maybe your SIG and this would be a really nicely balanced image. At the end, if you really want to, you could add vignette, but in this case, we don't really need to because it's kind of like a naturally vignetted uh, image, so we're fine. Um, we don't need sharpness at all because um, we already added clarity and you, you don't want to overdo it because the image is going to fall apart. So I think we're good. I'm just going to save it and uh, let me collapse it. So now when you save image from Photoshop, right? You want to have a Photoshop file, but at the same time, you want to right click and flatten the image. This will um, flatten the uh, all the layers and decrease the image in size without reducing quality. And now you simply want to save it as. My recommended size for the websites like Facebook would be 2048 by 1440. Um, I rendered it in a smaller resolution, so I'm just going to keep it like that. So I'm just going to click on save as and save as a JPEG. And now let's open it, shall we? So after we open the image, it looks fine. See, that's the JPEG, the final JPEG. Bending is gone. Coloring is a little bit dark. Now, this is another thing I want to tell you very quickly, right? See, in Photoshop, this image looks much brighter. Look at the chin. You see, the chin looks a little bit darker here. Now, this was saved in, uh, in Adobe srgb it's gonna get a bit brighter uh, when you upload it to the website so make sure that um, you are always working in um in srgb in srgb color space just read up about it or just watch some videos so you understand how color spaces work in short when you want to upload to uh, to um, an image to a um, website to internet you want to work in srgb color space Anyway, that's it from me guys, hope you enjoyed the vid, and drop us a like and subscribe if you did, and I'll talk to you in the next one.